going on, everybody? It is your boy, your man's Toxic Gamer 331, back at it with another video. And today, it is my most excited video of every single month the monthly check, which we will be doing uh, a ranking of all the movies that I have seen in theaters and at home. Uh, of the month, February, from the worst to the best. We will also be doing my, uh, uh, DVD overhaul this, uh, month. And we will be doing my updated ceiling. So, um, and also, I want to show you guys a little bit of something. I've decided to switch my books. I think you guys can see that. With my DVDs right there, and then also have my books over here, so I swapped them. So there's the progress so far. We still have like a whole lot over there. So there might be still some DVDs that are over there. Um, but yeah. Anyways, uh, guys, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, share the video, ring the bell for all notifications, and also feel free to comment uh, your favorite movie of this month down below and also i have um for subscribers on saturday um i will be uploading the batman review uh, because i go to see the movie to that day so i'm really excited because i've heard almost good things about it from all the youtubers so far so that's pretty cool and uh yeah let's uh get into the list and uh just as a point of reference for my list i have two movies that i actually saw in theaters and then all the rest of them are movies i watch at home number nine for least favorite movie of this month i am gonna have to go with uh and i'm just saying this all the movies i saw this month were pretty good this one was just okay in my opinion it is Puffin Stuff, the movie. Now, um, I feel as if if I grew up with the Puffin Stuff TV show, I would love, love this movie. And I was going into this movie kind of thinking, how would I say this? I was going into this movie trying to kind of think of it as a horror movie because it's kind of dated compared to the tv shows now um where it's kind of a mixture of the way that they went is wizard of oz and alice in wonderland charlotte and chocolate factory all those sort of stuff into a movie based off the tv show and uh the costumes are pretty cool and you have a great main protagonist but um, this movie has not aged well, so that's why it comes in at bottom place. But, if, uh, somebody were to say, hey, you want to watch Pump and Stuff a movie today? And I'll, I'll be fine with it, but I'll probably play on my phone while I'm watching it. Um, number eight is A Dog's Purpose with the, it's kind of over there right now, but... Um, it has Josh Gad as the voice of this dog that keeps on dying and coming back as a different dog. And, uh, this is the first movie of that franchise. Uh, number two is on this list. Where, uh, he, yeah, lives through different lives every single time. And, um, why I put it eighth is because... Most of the dogs, um, like, he were, were, had a purpose and did amazing things. But then there were some of them that were duds, um, so yeah. And there was literally, like, no point of him being that dog. But Josh Gad does do a very good job and super, is super funny as um the voice for the dogs um but out of the dogs franchise so basically a dog's purpose a dog's journey and a dog's way home i think right yeah a dog's way home 
I think this one's my least favorite, but it is still very, very good, and yeah, has some depressing moments to it. Number seven, Benji, and uh, Ben. This is the first time uh, I was expecting something to happen, and it didn't happen. Uh, where. So, this is the first Benji movie I watched. I believe it was back in the 70s or 90s or something similar to that. And the movie was very good. Uh, I think that they had a very well-trained dog for this movie. Um, where he's just a random dog just hanging out, trying to live life. And find is a homeless dog. And, uh, yeah, well, uh... One day he finds this girl dog, and then also there's this family that gets taken captive by these uh, criminals, and they, he he's trying to save them basically. And uh, it's kind of dated now, but um, yeah, uh, it's still a very good movie, and less day outdated than uh, Puff and stuff. Number six is The Rundown, which was The Rock's very first big action role. And we already knew this. The Rock can work with anybody in any movie and make it hilarious. He did that right here with... Hang on. I gotta see what his name is. Rundown, 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 Rundown. Uh, his name is... Let's see. Sean William Scott, which I don't think he's been in anything else. Not, well, not anything else that I've seen him from, but he was quite charming and hilarious in this film. And the relationship between them two were kind of funny, where The Rock is trying to uh, hunt this dude down and bring him back to his father because his father uh, asked... For the rock to hunt him down and bring him to back. So yeah, and the guy's running away from him. And there's also terrorists near that are trying to kill them while he's trying to bring him back. It's his father, and it's really funny. So yeah, eh, not the best action movie of all time, but it was very, very well done. Um, fifth place, I just watched this movie last night, The Trial of the Incredible Hulk. Um, I watched those two, that, that, huh, I watched this, and The Incredible Hulk Returns for that two DVD set for the straight-to-television DVD movies of The Incredible Hulk TV show, which is right over there. Uh, but you guys can't see it, but yeah right there um and both the movies were very good and i don't know why i did not expect this it's a trial and i did not expect spoiler alert daredevil to be in the movie because yeah uh so uh bill bixby i think it's bill baxby or bill bixby he does still has the charm of the uh, Bruce ba Bruce or David Banner, whatever you want to call him, from the TV show, and still brings his A game. And I believe this is the second straight to television movie out of the Hulk movies, and it was um well done. It was well done except for one major part, Kingpin in this film. So he is played by um. Played by an Indian Jones, his best friend in the first one in The Last Crusade. Um, he plays the kingpin in this film. And literally, they what they did is... For the costume, he literally looks nothing like kingpin at all in this film. He literally just has a coat, and that's the only main part that looks like kingpin. He's not bald... And he has a beard. He has hair and a beard and sunglasses. And I, I think the dude does do a good job of acting as him. But it's just in the main part. They did not make him look like the Kingpin at all. Oh my gosh, my hair is messed up. Sorry, guys. 
but yeah, that's my main problem with this film. But besides that, everything else is very good in this film. And I think I have not seen the Daredevil TV show yet, but I think the guy that played Daredevil in this film did good. So definitely better than Ben Affleck. Um, Affleck. I sorry, I did that. Um, fourth place is the sequel to A Dog's Purpose, A Dog's Journey. Which, uh, the, after the story of A Dog's Purpose, it gets left off where, in this film, he has to watch over, uh, I forgot, Blake? I forgot, I forgot what Dennis Quaid's character's name was in, uh, A Dog's Purpose, but he has to watch over his granddaughter to take care of her in his dying breath, and that's what Dennis Quaid uh, asked him to do, and so he gets re uh, turn gets uh, reinvented yet again, and over and over and over and over and over again to basically uh, watch over uh, his granddaughter CJ in this stupid hair. Stay back. Okay. And so, um, all of the dogs that he goes through are especially very, very good. But except this one, Big Dog. He literally does nothing with CJ. He literally just stayed at a grocery store and lived his whole entire life there and just saw CJ once visit there and couldn't go with him. So the... That was kind of tragic and was unnecessary. I think they could have gone with a different story. But but the movie is definitely better than the first one. And the other dogs besides Big Dog are very well uh, used. Number three, Death on the Nile. Now, this is the sequel to Murder on the Orient Express. And this movie, some may consider better than Murder on the Orient Express. I... I'm still in the tweeners. I don't know which one I like better because they're both equal, equal, and have their own separate flaws. This one, um, has a good, um, what's the word? Uh, has a good platform where the murder can happen on a boat. I mentioned this in my which one's better category for Murder on the Orient Express versus Death on the Nile. Go check it out. Unless if you don't like me saying like a whole lot. Just there. Did it twice. So, uh, yeah. Unless if you don't love that. Uh, probably you wouldn't. She shouldn't watch it. But, anyways. Death on the Nile was very well. Well, the actors were very good in this film. And were well casted. Um, but the one flaw with this that it's not... I'm fine with is basically everybody's just spoiled brats and you don't care for a whole lot of people but uh yeah it has lots of twists and turns in this film so that makes it very well done this one might be con controversial but coming in in second place is uncharted sorry for all the people that have played the games I know you're at screaming at me right now Uncharted, I did not expect it to be that, uh, well, uh, that good. Uh, so, the first video ad game adaptation since, like, 2020. So, it's been a while. It's been a while. And, uh, they made this where I was not expecting Tom Holland to do as good as he did for the character of Nathan Drake in this film. And he brought his A-game trying to replicate the same success of, um, the same success of Nathan Drake. And it was really, uh, good. So, yeah. And, uh, but the only flaw I really have is Sully. And it wasn't the best choice for, uh, uh, <sighs> Mark Wahlberg wasn't the best choice for Sully, I don't think, because he looks nothing similar to Sully whatsoever, and he was just playing a stereotype of himself or himself. So, yeah. Coming in first place, uh, 
before the trial of the Incredible Hulk, we had the Incredible Hulk Returns. Where this one was very, I loved this film. It, I watched it for the first time day before yesterday, so Saturday night. And uh, uh, this has Thor in it. And uh, what ended up happening was the actor that plays Thor in this film is the dad from Good Luck Charlie. Which is very interesting. So yeah. And he brought his A-game and played ex Thor very well. He uh, replicated every single catchphrase and literally acted similar to the God of Thunder. And it was really funny. Um, what other stuff? The only problem with this is that's kind of tiny is Mjolnir can be carried by anybody. It's not that heavy at all for some reason. And it just... It's easy to pick up, which is no, which I'm fine with. Maybe they're just doing their own version, so it's fine. So that was my ranking. Now let's move in to my movie overhaul of twenty uh, February 2022. So first one I got this week, what I meant this month was the Spider Wick Chronicles. I believe I saw this at my grandma's house and was wondering what it was so i my dad i was saying i wanted it and my dad got it for me so i still have yet to check it out uh next up we have oblivion which is a tom cruise kind of space uh, apocalyptic film where the it's the robots have taken over and he's trying to uh fight the robots off and make it to this one point i believe i've not seen it yet but i've heard good things about it so yeah Ex well except for the trailer next up we have another tom cruise movie war of the worlds which i remember most of the most of the big parts in this film but I haven't watched the whole entire thing. But I do remember, like, the majority of the most parts. Um, Tom Cruise and uh, Dakota Fanning, right? Dakota. Yeah, Dakota Fanning uh, and their brother are trying to escape from an alien apocalypse. Where alien the aliens keep on abducting people. And they're trying to make it out alive and go to the military uh, military that's all i can say um it is good from the parts that i have seen and then the last uh dvd overhaul we have the adams family 2019 out of these movies this is the one that i did see all of um this one was very very fun i'm this might be controversial but i did love it more than the uh, original ones that weren't animated because it kind of send uh sended a positive message in this basically saying if you're you're f different it's okay you can still find friends and that was really cool so yeah this movie was great and then for my final part i believe we have the pictures on my ceiling so i have to get my footstool well not footstool but my um chair so last one i believe you guys saw was the mask so i gotta park my seat all the way over here well just in case i'll show you ow whoa uh so matrix resurrections i think you guys already saw that Here's my Toy Story 4 drawing. If you haven't seen that already. The mask. The book of Boba Fett. And my most recent one. Teen Titans Go. Which I thought I did a very well. Good job on. So uh, let me know what you think down below. And then I'll show you my work in progress picture. With. Drum roll please. Da 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 da. Bendy and the ink machine. So that's what it looks like so far. Pretty good, yeah? Okay. 
Well, anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed this monthly check. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, share the video, ring the bell for all notifications, and stay tuned for next month and this Saturday, this Saturday, the Batman review, and next month on the last day of the month, I will be doing my monthly check. So, be there or be square. I'll see you guys in the next one, everybody. <gasps> pa, 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 pa. Peace.